Amen. Oh, I love it when the outflow of your intimacy with the Spirit of God saturates the environment, the outflow. It's like speaking to a lover. Oh, when love is in the air, something palpable. It's beautiful. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Jesus Christ. We welcome you. We welcome you. Oh, we love you, Holy Spirit. The outflow of our love. A romance that's blossoming in our hearts. Each time we open our mouths to express it, it saturates the atmosphere. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. We welcome you, sweet spirit of Jesus Christ. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Victoria, Dominic, give me Luke 8. Luke chapter number 8, 1 to 3. There is no name like yours. None can compare with you. Your word is written on my lips. I'll proclaim it everywhere I go. There is no name like yours. None can compare with you. Your word is written on my lips. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. There is no name like yours. None can compare with you. Your word is written on my lips. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Jesus, Jesus, I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Jesus, yeah, Jesus, I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Jesus, Jesus. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Doluwani me. Doluwani me. Doluwani me. Doluwani me. Doluwani me. Doluwani me. I belong to you, Jesus. Do lu wani mi ye Do lu wani mi There is no name like yours 
None can compare with you. Your word is written on my lips. I'll proclaim it everywhere I go. There is no name like yours. None can compare with you. Your word is written on my lips. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Jesus, Jesus, I'll proclaim it everywhere I go. Jesus, Jesus, I'll proclaim it everywhere I go. Tolu wani mi, 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 oh, tolu wani mi, oh, oh. God's presence is here, my God. Toluwani mi, Toluwani mi, Toluwani mi. Give me that scripture, my dear. Luke 8, verse 1 to 3. The anointing of a kingdom funder. Ah, <laughs> uh, ay, 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 ay. The anointing. The anointing. What makes a kingdom funder? What empowers them? What is it that makes a kingdom funder? My friends, the difference is the anointing. The grace that comes upon a kingdom funder but it comes by means of an anointing an anointing but how exactly does this anointing come it's not enough to know that an anointing makes a kingdom funder Oh, I can still hear that song in my ears. It's like an angel picked it up and is now whispering it in my ears, a love song to Jesus. It simply says, I belong to Jesus. He's, I am his property. I belong to him. It's too late. There is no name like yours. None can compare with you. Your word is written on my lips. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Jesus, Jesus, I'll proclaim it everywhere I go. Toluwani mi, Toluwani mi, oh. Toluwani mi yo. Toluwani mi. I belong to Jesus. Toluwani mi. Toluwani mi. Toluwani mi. Listen, when that romance begins to blossom in my heart, it's hard to step down. It's a romance. It's deeper than the one that you have dating your spouse. When that feeling of brand new love comes on your heart and then the Spirit of God begins to inspire you. Oh, oh my God. Toluwani mi Toluwani mi You are my everything, Jesus. My all in all. I'll tell the world that you are my everything. That you came and you died for me. And now I can live my life for you. 
kali malah ini. Let's try to talk. The anointing of the kingdom founder. Put it in NIV. I love the way NIV put it in simple English. NIV. The anointing that makes a kingdom founder. <laughs> Ay ay ay. Oh my god. The Bible says after this Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. What was he proclaiming guys? What was he proclaiming? The good news. The good news of the kingdom of God. Did you know that the kingdom of God is good news? I know you watch CNN. You watch Fox. Eh? MSNBC. all the news outlets on cable tv but there is a good news the bible says he was proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of god proclaiming it who told you you need tv in your house when you can proclaim the good news of the kingdom <laughs> there are news and there are news i wonder why cnn always shows bad news sad is it really news when it is sad well the bible says jesus went from town and village proclaiming the good news the good news of the kingdom of god and the 12 were with him and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases mary called magdalene mary of magdala from whom seven demons had come out Joanna the wife of Chusa the manager of Herod's household Susanna and many others now the bible says something very interesting these women were helping to support them out of their own means these women they were the secret huh behind the ministry of Jesus they were the kingdom financiers as they went from town and village to another proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God It was women that were funding it. Very disturbing statement. I wonder if there were men in their midst. Thank God the Bible says and many others. So we can speculate. But whatever happened there were three notable names. that they could not but mention first of which was Mary of Magdala that's where she came from what did this woman do that wherever this gospel is told her name will be mentioned And then we are told about Joanna the wife of Chusa 
I like that name. The wife of Chusa. The manager of Herod's household. This is a woman that had means. So, Bible historians say that her husband was the head of the treasury of Herod, King Herod. And she happened to be the wife. The wife of Chusa. Chusa was the manager of Herod's household. Very little is known of Susanna. Very little is known of this woman called Susanna. But whatever it is, these three names stand out. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household. These two people, we know a bit more about them. We don't know much about Susanna. And it is these women that were helping to support them out of their own means. It was since this time that women have been special to the heart of Jesus. And why Jesus has been special to women. Everywhere you go, in church settings, in ministries, you would see women gather. A natural love, as it were, a blossoming love, just for Jesus. Something about the anointing that was upon him made this woman willing not just to gather around him to support his ministry as he went about from one village to another proclaiming the good news the good news of the kingdom of God oh each time I read this scripture, my heart begins to burn. He was proclaiming the good news. What is so good about this news? Why did it need to be proclaimed? Why did he need to proclaim the good news of the kingdom? It's because there, there is too much bad news, bad things happening. Somebody said, bad things happen to good people. It's true. People who don't deserve it. I remember a a very close friend, close friend, in Atlanta. Her brother was driving. Somebody hit his car. It was a hit and run. The person began to run away. Legally, that person was meant to pack his car and exchange contact at the very least, call the police. But he began running away. Then he decided to chase the person. A good boy. The boy was, I think he was 20 years old or so. Began to chase the person to catch them. And write down their tag details. And they get to a stoplight. And the guy comes out of the car in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia and comes out with a gun and shoots him three times and that young boy young nigerian boy died died parents sent him to school in the u.s to study something bad things can happen to good people and that's why there is a need a need to proclaim the good news the good news of the kingdom of God. I don't have time to explain the difference between the kingdom of the heavens and the kingdom of God. I'm talking about the anointing that makes for a kingdom financer. You see, let me tell you the truth. 
this woman's story Mary that is called Magdalene from whom seven demons had come out if we begin to examine her life we can tell why what made this woman give of her means to support God's kingdom we can tell those demons that so battered her oh my god showed her a lesson if Jesus had not shown up for that woman only God knows what would have become of her life Mary of Magdala it was because she experienced deliverance through the ministry of Jesus Christ because of the good news he brought to her you see this kind of good news is not just the one you say with your mouth there's an accompanying power with signs and wonders miracles the power to cast out demons it comes with this good news it's a package <laughs> so this woman experienced the redemptive grace of God seven demons were evicted out of that woman and this woman began to understand that all she needed to do now if she had touched this grace was to let somebody else also experience the same thing she decided to give of her life out of her means her livelihood to fund Jesus' kingdom era. as he went from king from village to town with his disciples this woman was not even told what she was doing for money but she was notable enough meaning that she was a significant kingdom financier to be mentioned here perhaps the first of all of them even before joanna the wife of Chusa, the one that had access to means. Eh? She was mentioned. It comes out of a knowledge that God saved me. <laughs> oh my God. God saved me. I could have been wretched. Wretched. Do you know what it means to carry seven demons? For a significant part of your life each demon more wicked than the other one you don't know <clears throat> wicked demons that's why i love how she was portrayed in the chosen how these demons would torment her to paint a picture of how bad how bad a situation was the bible says this woman was the first her name was mentioned first when i read this scripture i wonder why it is women that are mentioned as kingdom financiers i wonder There is something that name does. The name of Jesus. That's why I sang it in your ears. Jesus. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Jesus. Jesus. Listen to me. When certain demons have been expelled from you, you want others to taste of that goodness it comes from a conviction a depth that i would have been a wretch a total wretch i did not because jesus touched me this became the source of inspiration for kingdom financier i will show you how that anointing comes anybody can carry that anointing I found 
it is not something that God gives a select few only. It comes first from a determination. But that determination is extracted from a conviction. The conviction that Jesus did something to you. <laughs> he did something for you. Something strong enough, big enough to spend your life on him. Your means. The Bible says these women were helping to support them out of their own means. As they were proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Oh, it aches my heart that no man's name was found on this list. If Susanna could be mentioned, of whom we don't know anything about, at least the man's name should be mentioned here. And then Joanna is mentioned, the wife of Chusa. Who is Chusa? The manager of Herod's household. Now, I want to point your attention to verse number two. The Bible says before then, the twelve were with him. That's, those are his twelve disciples. And also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Semicolon. Mary, from whom seven demons had come out, semicolon. Joanna, the wife of Chusa. So, if Mary was the person cured of evil spirits, we can deduce that Joanna was cured of a disease. Mm, maybe she had cancer. Who knows? Who knows what she had? Maybe a heart issue. Huh? Maybe something as bad as the woman with the issue of blood. This woman was cured of something, either evil spirits or diseases. I think she was cured of diseases. I think so. And the Bible says that she was part of the woman helping to support them out of their own means. Kingdom financing comes out of a conviction that Jesus has done something for you. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, 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 it does. There's a reason. There's something that changed in your life. That disease would have killed her had Jesus not healed her. And from that realization, a conviction came out that this woman said, because he healed me of this disease, somebody else that needs to be healed out there with this good news. That person must taste of this good news. And that became the reason why she was financing the kingdom. Can I shock you? Jesus himself was the embodiment of the good news. When the Bible says he was proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, the man himself, Christ Jesus, was the good news. It was the good news. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Jesus. Jesus. That's what we do. We proclaim his name. And out of his name comes a good news. Oh my God. This woman had the disease. Mary Magdalene had seven demons. He cured her of that thing. Cured Joanna. We don't know what the deal of Susanna was. But something made this woman want to spend her livelihood on Jesus. The embodiment of good news. The anointing of a kingdom financier. The first thing you must understand about this anointing 
it comes from a depth a depth of what jesus has done for you a realization of what he has done and that thing becomes the basis of your conviction why you can spend your life on him while you can spend your means on him it becomes the basis oh my god the basis of a covenant you make with god i'm still wondering why there was no man's name found here i'm still hoping that when it says and many others somehow a man will be found in there my name is part of the many others but first in line was mary magdalene whom he cast out seven demons second in line was joanna the wife of chusa the manager of herod's household and third in line was susanna of whom nothing is known about now when God began to explain this anointing to me, I realized that there is a real deposit in the Bible for kingdom financing. And this anointing is not discriminatory in nature. Yes, there are those that are called to build God's kingdom and they have that grace, but anybody can walk in the anointing of a kingdom financier anybody the first thing is it comes from a conviction of what god has done for you oh my god and because of that this good news you want to finance it you want to finance that good news because there's too much bad news happening around the whole place cnn msnbc all they have to offer is bad news all they have to offer give me genesis 48 no genesis 49 verse 13. in the book of genesis we begin to see the origin of this anointing the anointing of a kingdom financier <laughs> the bible says jacob told his sons to gather together so that he might tell them what will befall them in the last days. They say when a man is about to die, that man's eyes are open in the spirit realm. He begins to prophesy. The man begins to utter strange words because now his spirit is in between the divide between the spirit realm and the earth realm and the man can see things he can see things i can't forget my best friend that told me before his grandfather died the man was already had had dementia he had dementia but he was his grandfather's favorite grandson and whenever he messed up, his father would drop him by his grandfather's house to speak to him, speak some sense to him. But the man had dementia. And a week before he died, he went by that man's bedside and the man, is as if his sanity came back to him. And he held him by the hand and said, called him by his pet name. I won't say that name, but conceal his identity. And he said, you have to break this thing in the family from my generation and from my father's generation we marry our wives we divorce them within the first two years and we only stay with the second wives happens to you my father happens to me happened to your father and now it's your turn you have to break this thing And he made him swear to him that he would break it. That man was seeing something else. 
that the source of that infirmity was spiritual. But my friend did not know that you need the good news, the embodiment of the good news to break such a curse. He tried to attempt it in the flesh and I was a first-hand witness how that marriage crashed within six months. Don't joke with the intelligence of spirits. I digress. Jacob is about to transition. Oh, God's presence is here. He's about to leave this earth realm to journey with his fathers. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He knew he carried the blessing. And this man now, unlike Abraham that had Isaac and Isaac that had him, he had 12 sons. He had to distribute it in 12 different ways. The blessing. The blessing of God that makes rich. He was carrying that thing. And the man began to prophesy. You know what he said? Zebulon will live by the seashore. <laughs> Zebulon will become a haven for ships. His border will extend towards Sidon. You don't know the meaning of what he said. The words he uttered him. This was the genesis of the anointing that makes a kingdom financier. The Genesis. Zebulon will live by the seashore. He will become a haven, a haven for ships. Listen, in those days, the seashore was noted for trade, notable for trade. When he pronounced that blessing, he released the grace. For them to have money come into their hands. He will become a haven for ships. What are ships doing there? If they are not bringing goods from other nations. What's the purpose of goods? To sell them. His border will extend towards Sidon. How I wish it stopped here. Because we are seeing that. Certain people carry certain things in the Bible. They are called fathers for a reason. The 12 tribes of Israel. You will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes. So these things were landmarks in the spirit. Very significant. Very significant. Listen to me, my friends. That blessing was pronounced on Zebulun. First, by Jacob, his father. Let's now see how it was reiterated in scriptures. Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the word is established. Give me Deuteronomy 33 verse 18 to 19. I love scriptures. I love scriptures. The truth of God's word is extended. Now, Moses is about to pronounce certain blessings. Moses is about to pronounce certain blessings on the tribes of Israel. Now they have grown. They have grown to a people, a nation. And if you're a Bible student, you would know how verse 1 of Deuteronomy 33 started. When I read these scriptures, I, I get excited. It excites me. I memorized it sometimes, you know. Verse 1 says, this is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned over them from Sire. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with myriads of holy ones, angels, 
from the south from his mountain slopes surely it is you who love the peoples all the holy ones are in your hand at your feet they all bow down and from you they receive instruction then he began to say some strange words the lord that moses gave us the possession of the assembly of jacob are you seeing how it's tied back to jacob <laughs> It says, the Lord that Moses gave us. Who is us? The possession of the assembly of Jacob. Moses was king over Jeshurun when the leaders of the people assembled along with the tribes of Israel. The kingship anointing came on the man. And when it came on the man, it gave him the authority to utter some words because the Bible says in the mouth of a king, there is authority, there is power. And whatever a king declares, it comes to pass. So he began to declare words about the tribes of Israel. And this man gets to Zebulon. Look at what he says. About Zebulon, he said, Rejoice! Zebulon in your going out and you Issachar in your tents Zebulon will summon peoples to the mountain Zebulon and Issachar because he 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 wrote them together there there are two different anointings and I know you know about the Issachar anointing but what do you know about the Zebulon anointing that is the real anointing that makes a kingdom financier. That's the real thing. About Zebulon, he said, Rejoice, Zebulon, in your going out, and you, Issachar, in your tents. They will summon peoples to the mountain, and there, they would offer the sacrifice of the righteous. Oh my God. They will feast in, on the abundance of the seas and on the treasures hidden. Oh, listen, you don't know what these things mean. Oh my God. See, these days God has put a newfound love for scriptures in my heart. And it's like a newfound romance. Now when I read scriptures... I see it as a love letter from God to me. Mm. So my eyes begin to see different things. I get excited. I get excited. This man says, they will feast on the abundance of the seas. The sea was still notable for trade back then. The abundance of the seas of trade. People will bring spices from India to Europe to sell. Trade was going on. All kinds of things were being traded. Moses pronounces a blessing on Zebulon as a king, the first king of Jeshurun. God. He says they will feast. They will feast on the abundance of the seas and on the hidden treasures in the sand. That's in the earth. Another one says on the earth. The hidden treasures in the earth, in the sand. Oh, you think South Africa has diamonds? <laughs> Nigeria has oil. Ghana has gold. Huh? the Zebulon anointing authorizes you to feast to feast on the abundance the abundance of trade and the natural resources hidden deep within the earth the Zebulon anointing so what is the correlation of Zebulon and Issachar why would you rope them together? Eh? Moses. There are two different tribes. 
like my Nigerians will say, what consigns Ebola, what consigns Saka? You don't know what he did there. The ignorance in the body of Christ is large. The tribe of Zebulon was known for shipping and trade. And the symbol of that tribe was a boat or a ship. It was a ship, really. Because this was the primary way money was made back then. Many people. But Bible scholars say that Zebulon made a deal with Issachar. And the deal was this. Zebulon and Issachar agreed that Issachar would dedicate all of their time to studying the Torah. They are the ones that had the anointing for the times and seasons. It was the Issachar anointing that did that. So they would spend their time studying the Torah to know God's patterns because God's patterns predict what will happen next. The reason why they are saying that a famine will happen is because after a pandemic sweeps across the world from the Bible days, the next thing that happens is a famine. It's historical. From the Bible days, you can check in the Bible. So you can predict and say a famine will come because a pandemic just passed. So Issachar were the ones that were good in doing that. They are the ones that reveal this pattern to us. That this is how God works. So this is how He programmed things on the earth. So they, they made a trade. Issachar would dedicate their time to studying the Torah. And Zebulon will conduct trade. They will spend their time conducting trade. That's why God gave them the seaport and the merchant ships. And because the two tribes would work together, they could interface, intertrade. You don't understand. Issachar would share the grace, the impartation, the knowledge, the prophecies, the patterns that they learned from studying the Torah. While Zebulon, on the other hand, will support Issachar's efforts monetarily so that Issachar could obtain that knowledge and that impartation. And it was still Zebulon that had access to the sheep. The kingdom financier anointing belongs to the tribe of Zebulon. Just like the anointing to know the times and seasons belongs to Issachar. But I'm telling you that anybody can walk in this anointing. Anybody. It starts from a realization of what God has done for you just as he cast out seven demons from Mary Magdalene, Mary of Magdala. How he healed that woman, Suzanne, Susanna, whatever they call her. The things he did. The things he did. That Joanna woman probably had a disease. Susanna probably had some evil spirits. And Jesus, because he was the embodiment of the good news, when he came to their village, when he came to their town, all he had to do was open his mouth. By doing so, he began to proclaim the good news. He was the embodiment of the good news. Jesus Christ is the good news. He is the good news of the kingdom. Don't look too far. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Jesus. Jesus. And so an intimacy comes out of the realization because there is a conviction 
of what he did for you. That conviction is strong enough so that you can spend your life on him. Because just as you spend money, God spends men. He spends the men. That is it. You spend them. And because he spends you, the totality of you, your money, your resources, your wife, everything God spends. And God said, I will spend you. He included my wife in the package. He owns you. And just like David made that man servant to Mephibosheth with all of his sons and all of his sons' slaves, all of his slaves, all of them became a servant to Mephibosheth. You don't know it's the significance of what is happening in your life. You don't know. Imagine a man, a master by himself, by his own right, has 12 sons or so and many servants and David makes all of them the servants including the man himself the servants to Mephibosheth a lame a lame boy you have no clue that that's how God works he spends men he spends their lives but you cannot give of yourself unless there is a realization of what he saved you from and what he did for you. You can't. You can never. This is the genesis of how you begin to make your way into the Zebulun anointing. That's how it begins. Because once you determine in your heart, in your mind, that what he did for me, money cannot quantify it then you can release of your means of your means to God I still wonder why it is only women that were named women remain the biggest kingdom financier till this date just so you know in every ministry I've spoken to it is women including the tribal marketplace minister There's something God put in them. You can't take it away from them. You can't. You can't. The Bible says these women were helping to support them out of their means. Their own means. And when they begin to do that, they position themselves because the Zebulun anointing is a pathway in the spirit. They begin to position themselves to inherit the Zebulun anointing. It's a position. Zebulun will live by the seashore. He will become a haven for ships. His border will extend towards Sidon. And when Moses had to pronounce a blessing rejoice Zebulon in your going out that means as that person goes out money will be attracted to them that's why they can rejoice an anointing pulls things you don't know it pulls things towards you there will be a magnetized see people will be magnetized they will be they will be attracted. That's the quality that an anointing is operational. It's the quality. If you meet a man teaching God and he's not anointed to teach, you will just, okay, let me go. But if that anointing is operational, it will magnet that person. That person's heart will be open like a flower. It is proof that an anointing, something supernatural is operational. But not just people, it can magnet money. That's why Zebulon will rejoice. He says, rejoice Zebulon in your going out and you, Issachar, in your tents. 
they will summon peoples to the mountain, the mountain of God. They will summon people to the mountain. How do they do it? They, with their resources. Do you know what it means to summon people to the mountain of God? How? To spread the good news. All kinds of media, TV media, social media, news media, publication, all kinds of media. To summon them to the mountain. And there, they will offer the sacrifices of the righteous. The sacrifices of the righteous. Do you know why they can do that? Because they will feast on the abundance of the seas, on the treasures hidden in the sand. Guys, let me stop you. Gone past time. Father, I've declared your word. I've declared your word. You are the good news that came down from heaven to earth. That we need to proclaim from town to village to city. And kingdom financiers, by their own means, will bring out resources to push it. You, you are the good news. There is no name like yours. None can compare with you. Your word is written on my lips. I'll proclaim it everywhere I go. There is no name like yours. None can compare with you. Your word is written on my lips. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Jesus, Jesus. I'll proclaim you everywhere I go. Tolu wani mi. Tolu wani mi. I belong to you. Tolu wani mi. Tolu wani mi. And because of that, everything in my household belongs to you. Tolu wani mi. Tolu wani mi. Guys, Jesus is the good news. And the anointing of Zebulon is the one that forges a kingdom financier to push out their own means and resources to fund the good news. God bless you guys. Have a nice day.